Hello, welcome to JM Travels. I'm Jason Motley. We are in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. Two days prior to our cruise to Alaska on the Celebrity Eclipse. We just landed. I'm gonna get my luggage. Go to the hotel. Let's go. hotel. Reception was great. Room is not that great, I'm not gonna lie. It was a little bit outdated to me. Uh, there were a few uh, modern touches here and there, but uh, for the most part it's a little outdated to me. Uh, for the price, I wouldn't really recommend this to anybody. So if you can look for another hotel and uh, maybe the amenities around here will make up for the room. We'll see. There's a small gym, and when I mean small, this is all that's in it. And there's a bar restaurant next door. Wi-Fi worked well, location is great, but if you need more amenities, I suggest another hotel. Yeah. Anyway, after a nice shower, I decided to explore some of Vancouver. All right, so my hotel is pretty much closed up. All the major, all the major, I guess, landmarks here. So going towards that way, I can go to uh, Stanley Park. Back over there, I can go towards uh, the beach. Being I'm going this way, I'm gonna hit. Canada, please. Canada Place is the actual cruise port. They get about three ships a week. It's not your normal cruise port. It's open to the public. So there's a lot going on around here.
walking west, you'll eventually hit Stanley Park. It's huge, a thousand acres huge. You spend your whole day there. Aquarium, horse and buggy, bike riding, whatever you want. But it's been a long travel day, so I'm gonna rest up. Early day tomorrow. So good morning. Beautiful day in Vancouver. Waiting to go to the Capilano Suspension Bridge. Got different ways to get there. Uh, you can actually drive, you can do whatever you want, but they have a free shuttle bus. It comes to the Hyatt Regency Hotel and other areas uh, to find it. By the Barrage Street Station, or this beautiful mural right here. Ready for the bus? Got my coffee. Let's go. There are also pickup spots at Canada Place and the Blue Horizon Hotel. I'm gonna have to look up where that is. Good morning, sir. How are you? Good, thank you. You'll need a ticket for the park. You could risk buying one there or go online, www.capbridge.com. Ticket prices for different ages. All prices are in Canadian currency. You'll also be asked for the date and time you'll be showing up. So choose wisely. Don't show up early or late. If you show up too early, they might not let you in. If you show up too late, you might have to wait. My suggestion, the earlier the better. The park does get crowded, and the tickets do sell out. Check things out. Hello. Hi. How are you? Good, thank you. Yeah, All right, excellent. Thank you. So the bridge was built in 1889 by Mr. George Grant Mackay who bought land on both sides of the Capilano River. This area here gives you the full history of how the bridge was built and other visuals prior to reaching the bridge itself. Yes, 230 feet high. 
Wow. <laughs> and it does shake a lot, huh? It shakes a little bit, but yeah. you know, that just makes it stronger. Okay. Um, because yeah, if it didn't shake at all, it wouldn't be able to support as much weight. Right, right, so right. We hold weight equivalent to around 96 elephants, so 2,387 2, kangaroos. Wow. Around 100,000 pounds if you're looking for actual units of measurement. Oh my yeah. goodness. <laughs> wow, it's amazing. Yeah, it's incredible. Yeah, it is. Wow. Well, thank you very much. Of course, have a good day. There's two-way traffic on the bridge, so stay to your right. And people are a little bit intimidated to cross, so if you get a chance, just pass them by. It's very shady. Once on the other side, there are more trails. The most popular trail is the Treetop Adventure. There are about seven suspended walkways from tree to tree, giving you sort of an aerial view of the park. So I'm having a great time at the bridge park. A lot to see here. This place is a hit. I suggest you come here if you're on your way to Vancouver. Great place, a lot more to see. Not wasting any more time. Let's go. Another popular area is Raptors Ridge, where handlers talk about these beautiful birds of prey. Back on the entrance side of the bridge, there's an area called Cliff Walk. A trail built on the side of a cliff, which possibly gives you the best views of the park. Of course, there's a gift shop, a big one, a lot to purchase, bought a magnet, sampled some fudge. There are a few places to eat. The restaurant is called Cliff House.
Nice place. Good food. I ordered the fish and chips. I'll say it again. If you plan on coming here, book early. Morning is the best time to come, and the place does sell out. My day ends at the beach, where they're having a celebration of light. An event that happens three times a year between July and August. Actually a nice time, a lot going on, a lot of food trucks. This truck here was pretty popular, good portions. With water, it was about 12 bucks. For entertainment, there was an air show. And fireworks. So the steam clock here really doesn't go off until like 9 or 10 o'clock in the morning. So if you try to get here around 7, 8 o'clock in the morning, you're doing yourself a disservice. It doesn't go off because it just uh, probably disrupts the neighbor. So 9 o'clock, 9 in the morning, I think it'll go off. When the clock is operational, it goes off every 15 minutes, toots off the time at the hour. While waiting for the 10 o'clock chime, I went and got some breakfast at this little coffee shop called Sander. It's in the brick building on the same street as the clock. Good menu for breakfast and lunch. Take a seat by the window, check out Gas Town, listen to the clock.
right? So another beautiful day in Vancouver. Even better, it's cruise day. Ship is in. Time for me to pack up. Go back to the hotel. Come back here. Hotel's about a five minute walk, so it's all good. Ship, long process. Look about a nap. Good afternoon, and welcome on board the Celebrity Eclipse. This is a message for all guests who have recently embarked on the Celebrity Eclipse. Welcome aboard. For you and any other guests who have not yet completed step one in the Celebrity app and or physically checked in for your mandatory guest safety briefing. At your assembly station, we kindly ask that you do so at this time. Your safety assembly station location can be found on the back of your stateroom door. In large print on your seat pass Yet to get to your room, you will find that outside your stateroom door. And if you have carry-ons, you can still drop that off in your room, but be aware that your rooms are still getting ready for your new home away from home. Unfortunately, we cannot allow anyone who has not physically checked into their assembly stations to sail with us today. And safety All of assembly. life at sea regulations, this is an international maritime law, and all guests must attend this, and it's much faster and easier than the old-fashioned boat drill. Thank you for your attention, welcome aboard, and have an excellent cruise. Welcome aboard.
a seven day Alaskan adventure. You are in for a treat. Now, as the announcer said, my name is Rich. I'm your cruise director. And uh, I'm in charge of all the entertainment. We have different acts flying on and off the ship over the next seven days. I'm going to try for a seven day cruise on this stage to have 10 different shows. How does that sound? We're going to have some late night comedy, we'll have some matinees, and then we're going to do pop-up shows around the ship, so we'll always be talking about that. And the deal is, if you come to all the shows, we won't charge you to get in. We're very good, okay. So, um, we are, by applause, how many people have never been to Alaska before? Now listen to this, people. How many people have been to Alaska before? Said, Alaska is such a fantastic cruise. People will come back time and time again. There's so much to do. It's not your average type of cruise that you might be used to, like in the Caribbean or you know so anywhere else. It's full of energy. The scenery is unbelievable, and the wildlife is here. The whales are here. The eagles, the bears, the giraffes. Everything is just. First day at sea. Rain all day. This doesn't keep up for the cruise. But no better time to tour the ship than today. So the celebrity eclipse was launched in 2010. Was supposed to be your favorites in 2020, but we all know what happened then. So we wait. Anyway, on deck seven, Team Eric. Up on deck nine is the library. Down on deck five is the art gallery and the world-class bar. Behind the world-class bar is Sushi on Five and Cafe Al Bacio. Further back on deck five is the Ensemble Lounge. Way in the back on five, there are three specialty restaurants. Fresh Ave Cuisine and Blue. And the Tuscan Grill. Down on deck four, you have Cellar Masters and Fortune's Casino. Down on deck three is the Grand Foyer Guest Services is on three. and the Passport Bar. Also on three is the main dining room. A 
Up on deck 14 is the Sky Lounge, normally the nightclub, but used for special events during the day. Today, we're having the captain's welcome party, celebrating us back on Celebrity. Nice touch. And a nice way to end our first day at sea. Looking forward to our first port. First port of call. Actually, a beautiful day. No wind. Slight. High 50s, low 60s. Beautiful day for a hike, which is what we're going to do today. Looking forward to seeing the city. First time in Sitka. There were a lot of excursions to choose from. I wanted to get some walking in, so I chose to hike. So we might be with you. Keith, I'm confused. There's more. <laughs> After the minor confusion, we were on our way. About a 15 minute ride to the trail. Tour guide gave us a quick briefing of what we're going to see and what we might see on the trail. Uh, the kind of the final thing is we, before we get out on trail, we like to give a little bit of a bear talk. Mm -hmm. So we're in bear country. We actually have about one bear per square mile here in Sitka. So more bears than people. Um, but the good news is they're super antisocial. They really, they don't even like hanging around each other. They don't hang like hanging around us. Um, but Sounds like some people might live, Ontario, you guys probably are in bear area, right? Yeah. yeah. So what do you guys, what's the number one thing we don't do when we see a bear? Don't run. Exactly. Hug <laughs> don't hug it. Don't hug feed it. them. <laughs> Unfortunately, the greatest tragedy, bears are so cute, but yeah. we can never hug one. Um, yeah, don't run. Running from a bear is kind of like throwing, like playing fetch with a dog. When you throw a ball for a dog, it's just the instinct. When you run from a bear, uh, it's just instinct. I don't want to be a, a bear ball. <laughs> um, so that's the, that's the main thing. We don't run from them. On the hike, we learned about the trees, ate a few berries, and hit a small beach.
wander around, eat indigestibles like sticks and rocks, but not pleasant or delicious by any means. Um, but that kind of helps them so that they don't have to hunt, go to the bathroom. They can kind of sleep a little bit better. But in the springtime, these guys have this big, big flower. Uh, this is kind of the bulb to one of them. It looks like a big tulip, big yellow tulip. It's kind of stinky. It's pollinated by flies. Um, reminds me of my brother. <laughs> Okay, so this is a great example of our yellow cedar. Uh, yellow cedar, the bark's used for a lot of crafting purposes, um, traditionally used for basket weaving. When the fibers expand, when they get wet, it creates a watertight vessel. Uh, the wood, this is rot resistant, bug resistant, water resistant. So all the boards we were walking across for yellow cedar, you don't really need to treat them or anything. Um, all the totem poles made in Totem Park are made out of yellow cedar. Um, also used to make canoes traditionally. This guy right here, so this mark was made for crafting. This guy was not made from crafting. So what we think made this mark was a brown bear marking its territory. So what they'll do is they'll go through and they'll reach really high and scratch down and then they'll leave their scent on the bark. They'll like rub their scent on the bark. Uh, and this little mark we think was, a, so this is a mama bear teaching her little cub how to mark its territory. So it's a little lesson moment. So um, this was made a while ago and we're almost off the trail, so no worries, but I'd like to point that out to you guys. After that very nice and informative hike, we had time to check out the city before returning to the ship.
there was a 7.6 earthquake on the Richter scale, causing a violent temperature in this whole area. And it began to shift this very point of wind. So summer, Valerie, and Verity, who are all close to which are all close together here, began to grow. And it began to grow in 1899, and it began to advance. So that's the older history of this area. So you can imagine that at one time, Second protocol, Juno, whale watching. Trip's been great thus far, weather's holding up. Unusual for Alaska, if you know you know. Take some good pictures yes, out there, Will. Thank you. 190? Never went whale watching before. They usually hit or miss. But uh, we got lucky on this one. We'll head up 
favorite channel will swing around to Shelter Island, which is the big old island out there, about our one o'clock or so. Probably come down north past and down Saginaw Channel on our return trip, but that can change at any moment. We're not stuck on any sort of set route that has the freedom to take you folks wherever we want. After whale watching, we hit Mendenhall Glacier for an hour. It's nice. I've seen it a couple of times. Feels like it never changes. I don't know. Could be just me. Back in Juneau, and I finally am able to do something I've never been able to do due to the bad weather. Let's take the tram.
which is a local corporation. We were built on August 10th, 1996. We were passing through an Alaska temperate rain. Once off the tram, there are trails that go even higher. This particular trail took me to Father Brown's Cross. He built a church in Juneau about 1908. back down, I stop for lunch at the Timberline Grill, a well-deserved beer, and some fish and chips. Find a port of call, catch a can, and we're going fishing. Yep, only one per person. Alright, how many is in your party? One? I'll just take your stub from you. Once we hit the marina, our tour guide set us up with the necessary items. It's a $15 fishing license fee. That's for pink salmon, 
The king salmon is an extra $15. And whatever you catch, you can ship home. And that's where it gets pricey. Small crowd, five to a boat. We all took turns reeling fish in. Okay, we're gonna get a little line up going. Does anybody care to sit out first? I might throw another line in the water here. Hopefully we'll get through it. Uh, and then like, say you rod your tip, then you're out uh, once you get your fish. And then like so on, so forth until we get everybody like the last person will have all four or five of us. Might throw another one in. Yeah. Have you fished much before? Uh, I fished. This is my third time fishing. Your third time, so you're a pro. <laughs> <laughs> you know the trail. We have a lot of horse flies. Hey. I think he's low. If he's not, then we'll get. I think. What do you think? Uh, Flat think so. always a little bit harder to tell. Uh, I think so. Oh, oh, oh my God! <laughs> Look at that! Holy! Catch of the day, ladies and gentlemen! Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Oh no! Never caught a fish bigger than that? <laughs> I was like, that plot is riding a little low. I think something's there. That's right. <laughs> you can bring it in nice and easy. Take your time. Yeah, they're very soft. Oh, you got the wrong. Alright, that one's a little Redemption. better. Redemption. Redemption. Yeah, Great day of fishing. No king salmon, didn't matter. An excellent way to enjoy our final port day.
So there are only about 80 days of sunshine throughout the year in Alaska. And this cruise was blessed with six of them. But either rain or shine, hell, even snow. Alaska is one of those places you gotta go and see. So this concludes our cruise on board the Celebrity Eclipse. If you made it this far, congratulations. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, please hit that like button. And if you haven't done so, please subscribe to the channel. Thank you, Alaska. Thank you, Celebrity Cruises. And thank you for watching. I'll see you on the next one.